Ford didn't make these front wheel drive only. We did. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me for the next episode of Crossroads Rebuild. Last episode, so exciting. We got the Interceptor started with a brand new engine for the first time. It was so cool to hear this thing run for the first time ever. Not only had I not heard the Interceptor itself run before, but this brand new engine, which I bought online, sight unseen, I was told it worked, but I'd never heard it run. So it was so great to hear it actually run. I know I've got a great brand new engine. So in this episode, first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and get the rest of the cooling system installed. I need to put the fan in and I need to load it up with some coolant. Uh, before I get the fan in, I'm gonna go ahead and get some of this wiring out of the way that I kind of temporarily installed. I'm gonna get one of the uh, radiator hoses off, get it out of the way. So after I get the wiring and the hoses out of the way, then it's time to go ahead and get that fan installed and then try to do a little bit better job of installing the wiring in a more permanent basis. Then I'm gonna get some of the front end of the thing put together and I'm hoping to go ahead and take it for its first drive today. So wish me luck, let's go ahead and get started. Alrighty, well that took longer than I was expecting. Um, really, it wasn't the cooling system that, uh, that took too long. It was figuring out all the wiring and where things route to and what connects to what. Um, I think I've got it most of the way there. There's still a few odds and ends I need to figure out, but I think it's most of the way there and I think it's just, <laughs> I think it's mostly right. So like I said, there's still a few things I'm gonna have to figure out wiring wise, but it's much neater, uh, much tidier and um, I think we're ready to, to go on probably starting it again soon. But before we start it again, I'm gonna go ahead and fill up the coolant. So let's go ahead and fill it up and then we'll start it up, make sure the system's burnt, get all the air out of it, 
And then uh, if time permits, we may go ahead and throw the wheels on and take it for its first drive since I got it. So let's go ahead and keep moving. Have anything to say? Ford didn't make these front wheel drive only. We did. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty guys, so I kind of cut off without giving you any explanation after the last day of work. Engine's running great. It's staying uh, the right temperature. We're awesome there with the cooling system. Unfortunately, after doing that, I was thinking about taking this for a drive, the first drive. And so I went ahead and thought maybe it's a good idea to try just putting in the gear first, making sure the transmission's working and all that. And it started making an ungodly noise that was, uh, we'll just say it was heart wrenching. Not the kind of noise you want to hear after you put as much work and effort into it as we've done. So I just cut for the day, didn't want to think about it anymore. Doug's over here working with me this morning now. And after doing a little poking around, we think we found the problem and we've gone ahead and pulled out the drive shaft. So let me tell you what's going on. First of all, I'll go ahead and roll a clip here real quick, explaining the noise, or letting you hear the noise that it was making. And now that you've heard that, you can see how uh, upsetting that would be. So, um, my buddy Chuck was over here when I was working on it. He crawled underneath and he said it looked to him like the transfer case was spinning, uh, but that the drive shaft itself wasn't, which was also mirrored by the fact that the front wheels were turning but the rear wheels weren't. So today, Doug came over here with me and we did some experimenting and we're pretty sure Chuck was exactly spot on. So what we did is we had to pull this drive shaft out. Of course, to do that, we had to pull the exhaust out, which was fun. Maybe I should put a high performance exhaust on this thing now that it's out, but that's another story for another day. Anyway, this is the drive shaft. And specifically, this is the front end that attaches to our uh, transfer case there in the front. Uh, you heard that noise, that grinding, clacking, weird noise that it was making. And, um, well, come on in here a little bit, Erica, with that thing. You can see it has a whole lot of play in it, and you can hear that whole same thing. This should not spin freely from the rest of the drive shaft. For example, here on the other end, the rear end that goes into um, the rear differential, it does have flex, uh, but... It does not rotate separately from the rest of the drive shaft. It does its job as a, I guess, a U-joint of a sort. You gonna make it? <laughs> Sorry. I think a bug just got Erica and she jumped. You got to jump with her. Anyway, this is how these joints should look. And this one on this end is, uh, well, it's clearly messed up pretty bad. So with that being said, we now have the only 2017 police interceptor utility front wheel drive. Ford did not make them that way. Uh, but in any case, I now need to figure out what I'm gonna do with my drive shaft. In an accident, 
things happen and sometimes you just can't tell everything that's broken. We saw all the body damage, we saw the engine damage, but that engine damage also dropped the engine in. It took enough of an impact that it literally broke the engine. Uh, and so this took some of the shock as well. To be totally honest with you, I'm so glad it's the drive shaft and not something worse like the transmission or the transfer case. So I'm in the market for a drive shaft now. Unfortunately, I don't get to drive uh, my new interceptor for the first time just yet. Gonna have to save that for another day. I'm not sure if I'm shopping for a used drive shaft. If there's a shop in town that can fix this, I'll do a little looking around and uh, I'll figure that out. So at this point, now that we've figured out our problem, we can move on to other things like replacing that dash and putting the front end back together. So there's plenty of work we can still work on as we get this thing ready for paint, but that's what's going on now. Sorry I bugged out on you the other day, but that's why, let's keep going. is gonna do it for this episode. I am so excited about the progress in this episode. Had a little scare there at the beginning. We did get the engine running well with its cooling system. It's not overheating at all, running great. That's awesome. Had that scare there with the crazy noise and the, the shaking, vibrating. But uh, this morning we did figure out, Doug and I figured out that the drive shaft seems to be the problem with that broken uh, coupling there, whatever you call that, U-joiner, whatever that is. Um, anyway, so, 
As much as I wish that wasn't broken, it's something I wasn't counting on in this build, I'm so happy that it's that versus the alternative, which would be like the transmission or the transfer case. Um, just so you know, we did go ahead and drop it in gear after removing the drive shaft, and that noise is completely gone. Uh, so that does seem to indicate uh, that we're on the right track there with that drive shaft. Um, and so it's effectively a two-wheel drive, front-wheel drive vehicle right now. Anyway, after getting all that out, went ahead and swapped out the dash. So we now have our donor dash installed uh, with our uh, dash airbag replaced. I'm gonna wait to put the um, uh, passenger knee airbag and the driver's steering wheel airbag in uh, till another date, not quite ready for that. Got a few things to do. Uh, but the dash has been swapped out, it looks great. That was my first time doing a dash. Actually, Doug and I was our first time for both of us and uh, it went pretty well. I mean, I won't say it was fun. <laughs> it's a fiddly job. Um, not saying I'm looking forward to the next one, but it really wasn't as bad as I expected. With two people at least, it can be done in a couple of hours, and we did get that job accomplished. So, we're well on our way to making this thing a running and driving uh, accident-free, uh, or at least all the evidence of the accident gone, uh, and I'm so excited about that. Now, in our next episode, the goal and the plan is to start putting the rest of that front end together, test fit everything, make sure it's all there and looking right, and then we're gonna get this thing to paint. I don't know that paint will necessarily be in the next episode. I'm not sure how much of that uh, process I'll actually be able to show, uh, but in any case, that is coming up soon. Get the front end built, uh, built up, get the uh, paint taken care of, and we're well on our way. So I'm gonna be working on finding a, either a fix or a replacement for my drive shaft, and we'll get that installed soon as well. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Crossroads Rebuild. If you're excited to see the progress that's been made in this episode, go ahead and drop a like. And if you're excited that uh, the problem was not as bad as it could have been, go ahead and drop a like for that. I appreciate you. Follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And the links to those will be in the description. Follow me there. I'll post pictures periodically to keep you up to date on what's going on. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you in the next episode.